Hello, how are you doing this week? Okay, so this week, I want to talk to you about when things happen. It's really easy to feel helpless when big changes come into our lives. And when we fight these changes, we waste a lot of energy and we create a lot of suffering for ourselves. And we also block ourselves from becoming the most powerful versions of ourselves. We prevent ourselves from being open to possibilities and how we can affect the outcome that we want to see. And this topic this week was brought on by the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And I wanted to create a podcast episode that looked at change in a broad sense so that no matter what you believe, you will get something out of this episode. But I want to make it really clear before we start. I am going to be completely upfront with you about what I believe. I believe that women are autonomous beings who can be trusted to make their own decisions. I consciously chose not to have children, and I'm grateful that I have had that choice. Not everyone does. I also want to offer to you that if women can be told that they have to carry a child to term, that the government can just as easily make the decision that women that they don't deem fit to have a child, that they have to be terminated at birth. And Dobbs has set precedent that works both ways. Now with that, I want to have a heartfelt conversation with you. One thing that is certain in life is that things will change. Overnight, we can learn that we have new health concerns, a new boss, a divorce or breakup that wasn't our choice or a law repealed. When these things happen, we can feel powerless. We can feel like life is uncertain. And I will offer to you that life is always uncertain. We just notice it more when things change. We're paying attention to what we don't have control of versus what we do have control of. To me, the opposite of feeling powerless is not powerful, it's self-trust. Most of us are not taught how to trust ourselves. We're taught to look outside of ourselves for the answer. We want people to tell us what to do. We ask others, what's the next step we should take? We learn to trust others to know what to do. In fact, we've been spoon-fed the answers and the questions we're supposed to be asking and the answers we're supposed to be giving since childhood, since we were being educated in school. So it's not surprising that we want to be given the answer. What's the right answer? We always want to know what's the right thing to do. I will offer to you that you always know the right best thing for you to do. Sometimes we just don't have access to it. I will offer to you that all of this is socialized, this desire to have the right answer, to have the answer given to us. And I have to be on the lookout for it too, because I grew up in the same waters as you did, right? We all have human brains and we absorb the information around us and then we take it in and then we regurgitate it. And no matter how long you've been doing this work of self-improvement, it's so nice when someone can just tell us, hey, do X, Y, Z, and you're going to be successful. feels really good, right? Super easy. Then our brain doesn't have to work so hard, and we don't have to do the hard work of building self-trust. Unfortunately, no one can tell us exactly what is right for us. Only we know that. And because 99% of us didn't learn self-trust as a child, we need to build it. That's our responsibility. That's part of the work that I do with my clients. A personal example that I want to show you to really give you an illustration of the stark difference between what it means to have self-trust and to not have self-trust is the experience I've had with breast cancer. Now, in 2009, at 29 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. In 2022, at 42 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer again. At 29, without the tools that I have now, without coaching, I felt helpless. I scoured the internet for an answer. I bought cookbooks. I looked up people who'd gone through what I had so that I could feel like I wasn't alone. But I was scared. I spent a lot of time feeling miserable and I was ruminating in my thoughts. 
Now on the outside, I probably came across as strong, but on the inside, I felt like a hot mess. I felt insecure about my appearance. I felt sorry for myself. I mean, you name it, I felt it. I just wanted the doctors to tell me what to do and then I'd do it. Basically, I had zero self-trust, even though I had lots of evidence that I could trust myself, but I wasn't looking for that. And that's because I didn't know what to look for. I'm gonna show you what to look for in this episode. Now, at 42, I had lots more life experience and coaching tools. And you could say that it was easier because I'd gone through it before, but I know better because it was a very dif different experience for me. And there was more involved in terms of what the surgery was going to look like and all of that good stuff. So the biggest key to me, and I know this for sure, the biggest key for me handling it with grace was that I had so much more self-trust. I sat with my thoughts and feelings about the diagnosis and I knew exactly what I wanted. I told my friends about the diagnosis and I told them what I needed. And it's so interesting to hear people's responses when you tell them something like this, right? Some people get really nervous about how to respond, like I get it. So I told them exactly how I wanted them to respond so that I could make them at least influence them to feel as comfortable as possible. Now, another interesting thing is that a couple friends asked me how I was doing, quote unquote, really. And I told them how I was doing, but I noticed this thing, right? They believed that I wasn't really okay, right? That I was somehow in denial of how bad my situation really was because that was their thought about the situation. They didn't have the same self-trust that I have, right? And they didn't know the self-trust that I have. So it's just really interesting knowing that no matter the situation, we all have our own thoughts about it. And we are going to be influenced how we talk to people, how we behave with others based upon how we think about the circumstance. Now, what was really happening was I had built tremendous self-trust over the years, working on my beliefs about myself, what I was capable of, and I knew I could handle anything. And this is something that I work on with myself. It's not a one and done kind of thing. I consciously look at whenever I am faced with a situation, whether it's in my business, whether it's in my personal life, whatever it is, when I notice this sense of doubt or worry, I consciously cultivate self-trust. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. So that's how I was able to leave my legal job. And it was how I was able to handle the news of another breast cancer diagnosis with grace. My actions were deliberate. Did I feel powerful? Now, there were times I did, but there were times I didn't. And when, when I was making healthcare decisions for myself, I felt powerful. I knew that the doctors couldn't tell me what was right for me. They could only give me suggestions and I could ask questions. But ultimately, I would make the decision that I wanted, that I was comfortable with. And when I was in the hospital recovering from surgery, I did not feel powerful. That's why self-trust is even more powerful than what we call quote unquote powerful, because no matter what we feel powerful or disempowered, we can handle anything. It doesn't matter how powerful we feel in the moment. We can remind ourselves that we have authority over ourselves and how we show up in the world when we trust ourselves. Now, if you've ever been on the other side of a divorce or breakup that wasn't your choice, you may have experienced something similar. You may have felt blindsided, angry, confused. You maybe fought reality, wanting things to go back to the way that they were. And when we fight reality, we stay angry and confused. Now, it's okay to spend some time there. Feel every one of those emotions. Each emotion we, rece we receive in our body is a gift. It doesn't feel like it at the time, but I see them as gifts because they remind me to take a closer look at what I am focusing on in the moment. If I'm stuck in worry about the future, then that means I'm not focused on my present or how I can positively impact my future results. In the divorce example, once you accept what is, then you can ask yourself questions like, what do I want? How do I want to show up during this experience? What can make my life easier? 
Who can help me get what I want? What is the most important thing I want to focus on first, second, third? And when we go there, we're coming from a place of self-trust. We're asking ourselves for the answer instead of looking outside of ourselves for the answer. Let me repeat that. We are looking inside of ourselves for the answers rather than looking outside of ourselves for the answers. Now, if you take a moment to focus your attention on all the hard things that you have ever done in your life, you can build your self-trust. This is the exercise I want to bring to your awareness. Whenever you're feeling doubt or worry, or that you're not enough, that you're not capable, that you can't do it, that it's too hard. I want you to bring your attention to this practice. Think about it. You went through law school. Maybe you've handled tough breakups. Maybe you've dealt with grief after a loved one's passing. Maybe you've built your business from nothing. Maybe you've dealt with drug and alcohol abuse, either yourself or with a loved one. You've handled so much in your life. You've built up so many experiences. You've worked through so many hard things. And when you remind yourself of that, you begin rooting yourself down into deep self-trust. I did that. And that's why my second bout with breast cancer was so much easier for me, even though the surgery I had on my lung to remove the cancer was so much more invasive than the first time around. I mean, it sounds funny to say that out loud, but it really was easier. Even though I could have gone down another path and believed it, like believed that I should be sad and that this was horrible. And like, how could this be happening to me? I chose a different path because I knew ultimately this would be a gift. It would be another, another experience for me to build that deep self-trust. I mean, it's so interesting because that's how I interpreted later on after my first experience with breast cancer, that that was the biggest gift I've ever had. It helped me realize I was living my life, life on default. And I wasn't asking myself what really mattered to me most, how I wanted to live. And so when we experience these things, when things just happen to us, they seem to happen out of nowhere. They feel like a bomb. I want you to recognize that there's somewhere in there that there might be a gift for you. It may not feel like that now. I don't even want you to try to do it. If you're in the midst of mourning something, mourning a loss, feeling your feelings about, you know, whatever is going on for you right now. Don't even want you to try to find the gift. Just recognize it's, it may come to you. Like, I don't know how this second bout with cancer is really a gift, right? Maybe just sharing it with you is a gift. I don't know. Maybe it's that I'm building more self-trust as I share it with you. I don't know. It's very recent for me, but it may be that a year down the line, I see the gift more clearly. All right. It's definitely something I can share with you now. It's not so recent that I'm like battling with it, but it's something that I know for myself, I handled with so much grace and that I'm so thankful for it. So root down into that deep self-trust that you have, that you have done so many hard things. Think about this in terms also of like, maybe you have a new boss that has made changes in your office. It changed everything there, everything that you've become used to. Now you can stay in frustration and resentment, or you can ask yourself what you want. How do you want to show up at your workplace? What might make your life easier? Who might be able to help you get what you want in that office? What's the most important thing you want to focus on first, second, third? Now, these questions will remind you that you have more power than you think to shape your experience. And so this is what I do with my clients. I'm teaching them radical self-trust. And that self-trust is deeply rooted in a sense of knowing that is beyond what society teaches us to believe we're capable of. It's deeply rooted in self-love and compassion. Each of us has the ability to trust our knowing about what is right for ourselves. We have no way of knowing what is right for someone else because we are not them. We have not walked in their shoes. We have not had their experiences. And that's why I don't believe we can make decisions for one another. 
I certainly do not make decisions for my clients. Now you have the ability to trust yourself more than you know. This is the work I'm doing on myself constantly. We never have perfect self-trust, whatever that looks like, but we can aspire to it daily with the decisions that we make for ourselves. Building a deeply rooted sense of self-trust is the work I do with my clients. So if you want to get started doing this work, book a call with me, because when you start doing this work, you start to make decisions from a place of not just that self-trust, but looking at your future in terms of what's possible, instead of looking at what you've never done before and how hard things are and how it's an uphill battle, you start to see possibility. You start to act and you start to think into that possibility. And then you get to start creating the future that you want. And this is what I think is so important about this work, whether you're doing it because you want to work your way through grief for, you know, the loss of a partner or the grief of the loss of your rights. Like it doesn't matter what it is that you're grieving. It doesn't matter what it is you're trying to process when something happens to you. If you don't have a grounded sense of self-trust, you will feel like you have zero control. And then you will act from that place of believing you have zero control. You will not step forth and make the biggest impact you can make in your life. You will not step forth into the future self that you envision. You will not even be able to consider it because you'll be so rooted in the sense of, I don't have control, right? That there's nothing that I can do, that this isn't something that's possible. So My goal here was to inspire you to see things a little bit differently, to recognize that you always have the deepest knowing, like no one can tell you the answers, only you have that knowing. And if you're not connected with it, that's okay. It's something that can be learned. It's something that I learn on a daily basis, right? I am relearning it on a daily basis. The reason that we need to do this is because our brains have been acclimated to not having to have self-trust, to being told what to do, to having other people give us the rubric and then we just follow it. But when you start cultivating this deep sense of self-trust, then you begin to feel more free. You begin to feel like you have more control and you begin to take control of your future. So if this is work you're interested in, book a call with me. You can go to dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. And during our call, we will work through exactly what's happening in your brain and set forth a game plan for you so that you can begin your move forward into whatever goal you want to create, whatever life you want to create. And I will be there with you step-by-step. Now there's one more thing I want to share with you. Through the month of July, and this is 2022, if you are listening to this later on, I'm offering one hour coaching sessions to anyone who needs coaching around what's coming up for them around Dobbs v. Jackson. I'm donating every penny received from those sessions to Planned Parenthood. And here's how to take advantage of this. Go to dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session pick a time that works for you. And then in the notes section, be sure to add the words Roe v. Wade. Then I'm going to send you a link to your email to pay for the session. It's $250. I chose Planned Parenthood to give this donation to because I use their services as a young adult when I couldn't afford healthcare and they help families in need in low-income neighborhoods. I remember being in a Planned Parenthood when I was young, and I remember seeing these women with lots of children receiving health care for themselves. It was very clear they didn't have a lot of money and that this was their option, and this was a, a safe place for them to go so that they could get child care. And it really touched my heart, and I know that they do good work. So I hope that you take advantage of this if you're feeling any emotion around this decision. And I want this to be a safe space. So no matter what's coming up for you, I want you to know that I am going to be there for you. Okay. All right, my friend, sending you lots of love. I hope you're taking care of yourself and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.